All right, finally, it's come time. The beautiful Merlot wagon that um, a lot of you probably saw this one at the Brizzy Show, for those who came up and said g'day. Uh, it's time to hand it over. So Peter, congratulations, mate. Thanks for your patience. But um, look, I'll give you a, a run through of everything. I'll touch base on uh, everything and then I'll nail a couple of things, more specifically the, the draw system and electronics in the rear. But um, the VX 200 series uh, in Merlot. Merlot is a pretty rare and hard color to get into the country. Well, not any, can't anymore, but was 2020 and early 2021. Um, we've done what we typically do with every wagon, which is uh, have the AEV J Max suspension system chucked into it. Pre registration. Um, it is the only kit federally approved for a 4.2 ton GVM with three and a half ton BTC. Uh, so it's about 7.7 .7 combined mass on the road rolling. Uh, they now also have post rego approvals in place for certain states of Australia as well. This is a new kit, there's a few new updates. Um, we're now running a, coming in I'll quickly show you, we're now running an Ironman Proforge UCA instead of the road safe ones. Um, that's them in there. They're yeah, quite a cool looking um, bit of kit. They're nothing wrong with the Blackhawk ones, they've just moved to a, a full one piece mould instead of um, how the Blackhawk ones were with the lift off cap and stuff. This way there's no parts that have to be pulled apart to access or grease anything. Uh, still running the King shocks on these. Um, a lot of their update or uh, well, updated or up coming kits are going to include the option of the J-Max Alpha Series shocks. Um, they have been put through the ringer with AEV for testing and they are now a part of the new SSMs rolling forward for these wagon kits. Uh, and we're also bringing that shock line into our creative builds, eventually rolling out further into the year. So that's the suspension it is. It's obviously the J-Max rear diff housing upgrade too, um, which increases our load carrying capacity to 2.7 tonne over the rear axle, um, and uh, which is the only way properly to increase. When you increase the GVM, um, you you can't just put, you can, but what a lot of guys do is they just typically put bigger shocks and coils in a car. Um, what tends to happen if you put a massive GVM on your car over the rear axle housing, what tends to happen is you'll go over the factory limit of your rear axle housing, which then means your car is unroadworthy um, or in a car crash, it's uh, not insurable. So. The reason we do this, uh, on our creative builds, we do a uh, um, diff uh, bracing, which also increases the load rating of the rear axle housing. With our J-Max kits or the wagon builds, we just swap out the whole rear axle housing. Uh, it's just the way that we're doing it at the moment, but um, this is, it is a J-Max product uh, and it is a federally approved kit. So all over Australia, this thing can be registered at 4.2 tonne plus three and a half tonne uh, BTC. So uh, why I was just sort of touching on that rear axle housing is that there are other kits out there that are saying and giving you an increased BTC. Um, now, what you just have to be mindful of is that with those kits that are doing that, um, you, they aren't actually altering the rear axle housing load carrying capacity. So if you sit your car at 3.8 or four ton GVM plus towing four ton, you'll be well over your factory axle, ha axle housing load rating. So, which means you're unroadworthy. But anyway, let's, I'll just touch in a little bit on that. But um, what, so we do the suspension, obviously, then we put all the ARB goodies on it. We've got the Deluxe Summit bar up the front in our um, Pro Touring powder coat. We've put the Kmart rear bar on this one. Um, twin Jerry holder. We're gonna actually just put two water cans in the back of this one. Um, we prefer to keep water storage out of the wagon if we can. There's a, putting water in a wagon is a little bit of a recipe for disaster. I mean, if, if guys are thorough and really know what they're doing and their kids don't go and fill the tanks up or anything like that, then you're gonna have, probably have no problems. But this is a pretty easy way. You can put two little water cans here, here and here with little gravity fed taps on each side and you've got 40 liters of water storage. So um, obviously adding a Kmart rear bar is quite an expense. It's not for everyone. Um, they're definitely, 
uh, more so practical when you are touring. Um, around town, they can be a little bit uh, und undoing your arms, can be a little bit tiring over time. Um, pulling these in and out with your little handles. Um, if you just, you know, you're going shopping and you just need to undo, you, you have to obviously undo this wheel to then lift this ta rear tailgate up. Um, you can't take the wheel off and still have this arm here. This arm will still interfere with the bottom of this tailgate lip here. So you still definitely need to open the arms up to get access to the rear boot. If you're traveling and touring, it's not such a big thing. No one's really in a race or a rush anyway. So um, yeah, once your arms are open, then you've got this set up here. This is our typical pro touring setup in the back of a wagon. Uh, it's not for everyone, but we find that it's a good combination. One big single draw pulls all the way out. It's quite deep. Uh, and then we've got the, the fridge sitting lower. The main idea of this is it becomes a dual purpose. If you don't want the fridge in here, you've got a second drawer you can use. And you can pull this uh, fridge barrier off the top and then um, and have this little infill panel here. This one goes in its place. So then you've sort of got like a twin draw system essentially. But And as, as well, it means that um, you don't need a, a big heavy drop down slide in the back of your wagon. Um, if, uh, if you think you need more draw storage, then we can put a slimline draw underneath this one or another slimline draw on top of this one. If you don't want the table, we find the table to be one of the best things ever. Um, it's super handy, like with the whole setup pulled out, you've got a really good prep bench there. Open your fridge, put everything right here. Uh, we also op offer a, uh, a secondary sliding tabletop that that covers only here we put these little teflon skid pieces down the sides and then you've got like a cnc cut um little uh ply board bench top here so you can have this one and that one there for most for the most part this draw system is quite practical for a, a variety of um uses if you think that yeah if you're going to do a lot more solo traveling and you're not taking the van with you as much, then you might need the two drawer system with a like a sliding fridge top or even a slim line underneath this one or another one on top of that one. But for the most part, we can um, accommodate for a variety of needs. This is just a good balance. It works out quite well. But so yeah, KMR rear bar, obviously, pounding in our pro touring powder coat, it comes up freaking unreal. Very nice. We're standing under the quick pitch awning, obviously. It's on our um, on our mounts, on our big brackets uh, that we made to adapt to the Rhino platform. Big beefy brackets, it's a full wrap around freestanding awning. Um, we've never had to drop a leg in on these awnings to date, so they do, they do handle the breeze really quite well. Very cool piece of equipment. In behind here, I'll show you. We're running the Allied, Allied Rock dark tints in an 18 by nine and the 285 65 18. There's the business end. We've got the Red Arc BMS and the uh, Red Vision TVMS system in there. That's controlling solar input. It's controlling DC charge and AC charge. It also, the, the biggest beauty of the Red Vision system is that it eliminates the need for um, accessory fuse blocks, separate circuit breakers, uh, all that sort of stuff. It's all done in that one system and it's controlled through this screen here. And then we go and initialize it and uh, assign channels to your appliances and you can switch them on each side or however you want to set it up. You can group appliances. You can also um, ignition trigger certain appliances as well so if your car turns on you can turn on your side lights roof lights a fridge can turn off when you turn your car off um, it's a very clever unit so we've we've gone to this way this path because we've found that having a system that talks to each other um, that's very well integrated uh, is it, really consumer friendly um, all you guys out there that are traveling and using the systems love it um, and it's 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 latest technology. It's 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 a it's an awesome bit of git. So we've also got the compressor, obviously assigned to a channel here. So it pumps up. You've got a little outlet down the bottom there. 
we keep all our air hoses and stuff in this one. It's a twin ARB, we house it in this rear, rear quarter panel and keeps it out of the way. That way you've got a big storage pocket down in here. We're still running the um, airbag man wireless inflation kits so we can control. So coming off that ARB twin is um, then goes into the airbag man inflation solenoid and from there you can control your airbags from up the front little, with a little wireless remote. It's, um, it's quite a cool little unit. So anyway, moving around here, got the King Shocks as part of the suspension kit. And we've got the Black Duck Four Elements, the seat covers in this wagon. They're a really cool seat cover, very well made. It's a combination of your denim and canvas, all sort of molded in. It's like a hybrid, I suppose is what they're calling it. But got the Safety Dave camera as well for the back of the van. And there's the um, Airbag Man little digital gauge for the for your left and right. GME XRS UHF as well. Like most of the 200s, we keep them pretty simple inside. They don't need much. Sound system's great, the head unit's great. All it's really doing is just adding a few little finishing touches to it, but. Um, the ARB Summit Deluxe Bar, it's our standard bar that we put on all of our builds. Uh, we sort of believe that, hey look, if you're actually gonna go touring, then um, this sort of bar covers all bases. It's, it looks good, it's, it offers great protection. Um, the Sahara bars look great as well with the single hoop down here. This is this part of the bar offers all the strength, so that's doing most of your protection. And these top hoops, I suppose, they're like a backup or a secondary line of protection from your roofs and stuff like that. Trees, these are handy if you're going to do a bit of bush bashing, pushing down trees and whatever. Not that you really want to be taking a brand new Merlot cruiser through trees and doing that, but some people do. Um, got the Nava Ultimas. Uh, with the nice little red ring sort of blends in with the Merlot. Looks quite cool. And then up the front, under the bonnet, is our standard diesel power performance package. Um, DPF still intact, obviously. We've got a torque at DPF back exhaust system, the FFM uh, sealed airbox. We've got the DPU high flow cooler, pre filled kit, catch can. All the good is we've got a, a, a self fi booster in this one as well. And um, we mount that little module in the glove box here. We put the uh, the UHF module in a self fi little power pack in there. Everything that we put on our wagons is um, detachable. We like to be able to pull things off if we need. Um, Anderson plug, Deutsch plug connections. Um, for you guys at home when you want to be able to change it up, pull pull things off to get to something, clean it. Um, yeah, it's actually, what's the power figures on this one? I'll show you. Not in there. It's, we average, average around the, uh, around the 780 Newton meters post tune with a DPF still in, 780 to 800 depending on setup, what you're doing with the car, um, around 170 kilowatts. Um, they're great fun, good fun to drive. Um, and we also set up the coil heights uh, on each car. Slightly different, this one's got the rear bar and a long range fuel tank. So uh, added weight, we will change the rear coil height uh, depending on what's going in and on the car. So um, this one has turned out just looking stunning. So. Clearview next gens as well. Yeah, but if you guys um, if you guys are unsure about uh, this particular layout with the drawers, um, we can change it up. Obviously, so we can do a two drawer system, single drawer, double stack, low profile, however you want to do it. But anyway, if you guys got any questions about this build, hit us up. Send us, drop a comment. Send us an email. Give us a call. Cheers, guys.